Welcome everybody to this next session at Connect DX of too many alarms and not enough control. Uh, we're going to discuss how to reduce nuisance alarms and use incident management. Um, honored to be able to speak and have a discussion today with the Director of IT at the Toronto Pearson Airport uh, or the GTAA, also known as the Greater Toronto Airport Authority, uh, Mr. Zhelko Chacic. And Zhelko, thanks so much for joining me. Uh, we really appreciate the time. And as mentioned, we've known about the airport scenarios for a long time. There's been a lot of alarms and a lot of activity that come through in the airport environment that we've seen uh, over the last number of years. Uh, if you don't mind, before we get going though, I'm going to ask you if you can tell us a little bit about GTA as well as your role as the Director of IT uh, at the airport. So the GTA, we actually operate and manage uh, the biggest and um, the largest airport in uh, Canada. So as an um, organization on behalf of the government, we were established in 1996 and ever since actually we've been um, in the airport business. Part of our land lease agreement, we have a deal with the uh, government and essentially we pay the rent and we do everything possible in order to actually improve the passenger processing through this airport and to improve the economy of uh, Ontario. And indeed, actually, we are probably one of the biggest contributors of um, Ontario's economy as well. So having said all that stuff, um, I've been with the airport authority for past uh, 19 years, I believe, and um, it was quite a journey, actually. Um, currently, we process close to 53 million passengers and actually I'm um, probably a month ago, we were at the mark of uh, 53 with a plan to go towards 55 million this year with the unfortunate events that are actually coming down the pipe right now. The things will certainly change in the future. So the challenge was actually, and there was a, not only a challenge actually, it was a, such a wonderful journey for the last uh, 19 years actually being at the airport that moved from 25, 26 million passengers to 53 in less than 20 years and just the pace of development, uh, the change of the landscape, the change of the economy, the change of the business model and cultural change that we went through. Mm -hmm. It was an amazing journey and I'm really proud of um, this contribution to the community. Yeah, the numbers are amazing. It's staggering how the airports have changed over the years. So uh, let me introduce myself as well to the to the viewers. Uh, my name is Brent Carey. I am the business development lead for transportation across Canada. Uh, my accent is not Canadian. I am originally from South Africa and I've had more than 16 years experience in the physical security world. So a number of airports um, that I've worked with across the world uh, have really led me into the role that I am in now. And what I've noticed, as you mentioned, Jalko, is huge growth in numbers of, of airport travel, passenger travel. But I'm sure you'll agree, we've also seen um, a higher risk in security, right? We've had a number of changes in the last 15 to 20 years, dating even back to 9-11. Um, from a GTA perspective, what is your vision in terms of the security of your airport? And if I can ask a follow-up question to that, how do you see technology playing a part in helping you achieve that vision? So I'll focus on the second part, which is actually the technology piece and uh, just part of my role for, and I didn't actually explain a little, uh, I'm using the opportunity to explain a little bit better by answering this answer That's as well. I was dealing with safety and security systems for probably like 10 years of my career here in GTA and then I moved to different roles in IT. Um, throughout this period of time, actually, we we experienced 9-11, we experienced multiple uh, power shutdowns, we experienced multiple floods, so we experienced multiple, multiple events that are actually changing the landscape of the passenger traveling through the airport. And the security part of it, and actually the security regulation compliance and the security operations are actually managed by our safety and security department. And I'm essentially their partner in enabling um, that compliance and regulatory requirements are actually providing a solutions that are meeting compliance and regulatory requirements and enabling processing of the passengers as seamless as possible with a minimum um, intrusion and minimum impact on passenger experience throughout the airport. Again, 
given the connotation of some uh, government regulations and the fact that still the government agencies are the ones actually that are doing the screening and um, yeah. So how do we see the future and actually where does technology stands with regards to the future of operation of the airport? So looking into the safety and security world, um, the level of automation, the level of reliance on the access control, CCTV and other technologies, it's immense. If you're looking back into the past and back in the day, like uh, when we had like 50% less passengers, we still had uh, three security operators per shift uh, managing something in range of 1500 cameras and maybe no more than 1500 security doors. Nowadays, yeah. with uh, close to 4000 cameras on our network, close to 4000 security doors, electronically monitor security doors, we still operate the entire ecosystem with three operators per shift. The amount of events, the amount of alarms, the amount of information, the data that is coming towards them, it's staggering. And in the future, mm -hmm. actually, with all the smart technology, with all IoT and all the stuff that is coming down the pipe, it's going to be overwhelming for anybody that is sitting in front of that console and trying to operate the airport. Whether it's a security or the airport operations, um, the deal is the same. Too much data and too little information. Yeah, the, 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 the common saying is, of course, data rich and information poor, right? Absolutely. Uh, again, again, looking at the size of uh, Pearson uh, with over 50 million passengers annually uh, and almost something that people forget is the cargo side of it because that's another side of the operations and security. Uh, Pearson Airport accounts for almost 50%, I think it's about 48% last year, of Canada's cargo, yeah, which I'm is sure a that's... staggering number. Yeah, it's funny enough that the business that is booming nowadays. So yes. ever since we enter into this um, lockdown with COVID-19, actually our cargo operations uh, went up compared to the past year, probably 15%, something like that. Yeah, so you've got all these passengers to worry about. You've got massive amounts of cargo to worry about. You've got legacy technology. You've got changes in technology. You've got automation requirements. These are probably some challenges. What are your key challenges uh, that you frequency, uh, frequently face in, in your airport? So the airport operations are kind of um, unique. And again, if you look into any other transportation industry, the airports are highly exposed. The amount of people that we process daily through the airport, it's in a range of 130 to 180,000 of passengers. Yeah, uh, wow. But on top of it, uh, there is probably in a range of 55,000 employees, whether it's uh, GTA itself, we are small as an organization, the amount of our employees, it's relatively minor compared to everybody else, but uh, Air Canada, WestJet, CARA, agencies, uh, all the government agencies, all the operators of um, services, food, retail, there is additional 50,000 people a day at this airport. So we are talking about a relatively small city of 200,000 people. And all 200,000 people are actually going through our facilities, going through thermal buildings, and the level of sec levels of security that we implement here has to be unique. You have to deal with a mass population that is actually using this airport as a workplace. People that are actually going back and forth, the people that are that are actually subject to a scrutiny of a different uh, government agencies or organizations. So we have a very uh, robust model, essentially like every other organization we apply Swiss cheese effect and different uh, layers of security. But on a technology side, the challenge is actually, first of all, it's keeping all the wheels running, making sure that everything works as designed and there are no, no operational interruptions and no operational day-to-day -day issues. The challenge is actually managing daily changes. We are living in an environment that is subject to a change. At any given time, there are numerous construction projects at the airport. We are changing the layout of, layout of the buildings, retail space, our facilities are constantly being, being um, improved. Um, so basically, where you have a door and an office today, tomorrow you're going to have a corridor, you're going to have a meeting room, you're going to have something else. So the yeah. number of changes is staggering. And yeah. again, everybody thinks like, oh, it's only two thermal buildings. Indeed, it's not. It's over <laughs> 70, 70 buildings 
at the airport wow. property plus two major actually three major parking garages as well yeah yeah it's incredible and i mean uh, just from a general operations perspective i think it, most people who've ever traveled through an airport understand the scale of it the enormity of it they don't really see the day-to-day -day, though uh, that you see they don't really see those everyday changes of, as you mentioned, one door being there today and tomorrow that door being taken away and what that impact has on your operation as well as your security personnel. Um, it's fair to say that security is also not top of the pops when it comes to who gets what budget allocation at the start of the year. Uh, do you yeah. find that other systems take priority pretty much uh, what we see in other verticals as well? Yeah. So, I mean, hearing that privilege that um, I've been working again strictly in safety and security world for many years, I think as an um, engineer, integrator, master architect, you name it. And eventually a period of time, I actually was championing a number of projects that actually converge safety and security systems with the uh, rest of the airport technologies. And actually we were probably the first one, uh, the first major airports that actually converged um, uh, regular analog video and we actually switch it to IP based video, converge it on the IP network and getting financial uh, support for any safety and security projects was was and is traditionally a challenge. Only when we dealt with major disruptive events like 9-11 actually the money was a lot of money was actually put in the industry itself. But yeah. um, Having been on the other side of IT for past couple of years, I see the amount of money being spent on um, passenger-facing uh, technologies, customers, anything that is actually that makes money. The amount of money it's unproportionately high compared to the safety and security. So, safety and security it's always on a back burner. It's uh, essentially considered as a great risk management tool, and it's something that you must have and you don't necessarily want to use. And it's essentially very similar to a fire alarm system. You got to have it, but it's not front facing and yeah. you yeah. tend to invest now, as little as possible. I'll move on to the next question. So essentially, uh, Jaco, with all of your security systems when it comes to airside perimeter um, we've got uh, on bus possibly we have obviously access control at boarding gates with boarding route management uh, we have video surveillance uh, we have fire alarms we have intruder alarms fair to say you get uh, one or two false alarms or what we like to term nuisance alarms uh, so we have a significant number of um events, alarms on a minute basis. I would say probably like just looking at the sheer number of security doors and all the doors that are being operated literally nonstop. Uh, the amount of event goes beyond thousands per minute and the amount of information and data that have been actually displayed in front of the operators is just staggering. And um, yeah ability of an operator to actually make a proper decision on a basis of what is being displayed on the screen uh, highly depends on their experience and familiarity with our facilities and as well of course our ability of our systems to provide uh, appropriate information uh, at appropriate level at any given time. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. So the number of nuisance events and nuisance alarms it's in it's extremely high still. Um, again, by the nature of safety and security at the airport, unlike any other facility where it typically has uh, one alarm or one event per security door, here we are dealing with uh, something in range of 10 sensors per door. We monitor yeah. the crash bars, ledge bolts, uh, door position switches, number of other things, and all those events are simultaneously triggered and an operator actually has often ha have to actually spend a significant amount of time trying to figure out cause and effect actions. And uh, the the over overwhelming amount of overwhelming information actually greatly hampers their ability to be as efficient as needed. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I think from your side, one thing that we've chatted about and, and one thing that I've heard come out of uh, out of GTA or out of Pearson is not only with the map uh, helping the operators to see and locate incidents where they're taking place to be able to identify and help respond quicker, right? 
have that response quicker, but also then have that reportability and that auditability. How well did the operator respond? How quickly did our team respond? Where is the actual evidence of that aspect of it? Because that's something that's sometimes overlooked. Is, is that fair to say? Uh, it is fair to say. So again, looking forward and looking into the future, um, currently we do have a couple of projects in place which are actually dealing with the upgrade of the moral security systems infrastructure and aside of the technical aspect we are looking actually to improve change and make our processes uh, better than they are at this particular moment. So basically we will be abandoning, uh, we will abandon actually custom um, integration that we have had uh, specifically developed for us. We're going to go with a COTS type of a solution, which uh, yes, it does provide less features, but uh, enables more seamless day-to-day uh, -day operations and reduces that risk of uh, information and data disparity. And aside of the graphical and visual aspect of information being presented as well, we're going to be looking into um, auditability of actions and unification of the actions by the end users. So all the standard operating procedures and all the activities that operators are performing right now depend actually on uh, skills experience and familiarization and some subjective elements of the operator. However, in the future, the entire idea is actually to have the entire process mapped in um, uh, mission control and basically have everybody act upon events in a seamless uh, fashion and being able actually to automate as much as possible of that uh, backend work that is being performed by the operator now. Yeah, as you say, moving away from, let's say, the traditional line by line alarm management and trying to read and source through alarms that are coming through at a rapid rate versus going into maps. Um, so we've also chatted before where there's some cool ideas and some cool technology out there, something like virtual reality, for example. If there was some technology that was of interest to GTA that you would want to implement, um, what would that be? So looking again fast forward a couple of years down the road hopefully i'm looking into basically 3d visualization potentially like a gaming type of um, approach yeah. to management of um, uh, facility aspects uh, basically in the future if we would be eventually able to get uh, common uh, integration elements with a beam like uh, platforms like building information management and yeah. have ability actually to create a unified solution from uh, building planning and design phase even before actually the building is being erected and actually use those 3D models overlaid yeah. with uh, real life uh, CCTV footage and being able actually to have a holistic view of a building and uh, security logical paths and uh, um, entities within the building, that would be something that we are extremely interested in. And again, if you look into the market at, at this particular moment, aside of numerous uh, BIM solutions that have the components that will actually get us to that, to that desired future, then you look into products that are very popular in a mass market like um, in a um, uh, house and condo resale market that are actually enabling a real-time 3D view of the building and facility. Looking to these technologies and merging these technologies with traditional safety and security is something that we are extremely interested in. Yeah, absolutely. And as you say, because of the changing environment of the, the concourses or the airport or the terminal space itself, you know, to be able to go and change a JPEG or a PDF is not so simple in Plan Manager. Whereas in a virtual environment, if we had more of a live view or a live interactive map that we could 3D walk through, it's easier to make those changes on the fly. Absolutely. Not only that, uh, for example, if you look into traditional uh, setup of the airport environment where the construction happens on a daily basis and all the GCs, all the general construction contractors are actually delivering portions of the building, producing PDF maps or any AutoCAD maps or any other uh, digital type maps that are typically given to client six, three to six months upon project completion, meaning yeah. that we are always at the tail end. We are always at the, at the point of trying to catch up and trying actually to update those maps in a mission control genetic plan manager two or three yeah. months after the fact. In the meantime, yeah. we still have to operate a facility. In the future, right. if the BIM would provide us actual ability to create those assets and elements upfront, have them actually integrated with um, 
security management platform at the level of uh, design drawings. And as they're built, they are just made active. That would be something that you're extremely interested in. Yeah, I, I love the concept. I love the idea. I'm sure there's one or two uh, people attending the session now that have thought a little bit differently and definitely in the airport space have thought, wow, that could be really cool based on some of our challenges. So thank you for that. Uh, that that's a cool insight into the, possibly where we could be in the future. And who knows how far we are down the line. And speaking of the future, it is a, it is an uncertain time. It is a it is a dark period in our history, I guess. Um, there's one last question I'd like to ask you with a couple of minutes left is, how do you see this COVID-19 pandemic affecting airport technology investments in the future? There's obviously going to be some kind of spend that needs to take place. Um, how do you see it from your personal aspect and your professional aspect being in this industry for so long and going through so, some yeah. previous challenges like 9-11? As a um, technology and solution provider and somebody that is actually uh, actually living off uh, providing solutions to real life problems, this actually gets us to uh things think outside of the box and it's gonna actually get to every single one of us outside of our comfort zone having said that um, all that necessity will actually be a strong drive for innovation and strong drive for change the physical layout of our facilities will have to be changed drastically and the fact that we're actually always focused to achieve maximum within the minimum footprint that premise will dramatically change and look into the overall ecosystem, which actually depends, dip, still depends a lot on um, physical passenger interaction with uh, check-in, um, whether it's a check-in agent or whether it's a check-in kiosk or any other automation device. Look into the future, uh, that physical contact, uh, there will be less and less of it. Uh, look into the baggage systems. Uh, this win will definitely actually be a major breakthrough for the RFID-based type of technologies. And yeah. whenever we have an opportunity to have any kind of a contact class uh, processing of a passenger, we'll definitely go for something. We'll go for it again. Uh, I believe there will be some changes that ha will have to be ma made on a privacy side and a legal side in order to enable such development. But yeah. again, uh, probably creating a virtual ID from the moment somebody actually uh, buys the ticket or somebody enters into the airport and that virtual ID will follow individual all the way towards the gate. And that virtual ID will expire at this airport at least once the passenger um, is at the airplane, but that virtual ID may be passed to the other airport. So I see actually more need for integration and more need for technology investments in the future. Brilliant. Uh, it, as you say, it is interesting. Uh, there is always room to think outside the box in these challenging scenarios. Uh, speaking of virtual, we are doing this virtually. This is the very first uh, time we've ever had a, a exhibition set up this way uh, as being Genetech and it's probably an industry first in our, in our physical security industry. So once again, I would love to thank you so much for your time. We really appreciate your candidness, your openness, and of course, uh, letting us into your thought pattern. And uh, thanks so much. We really appreciate it. Uh, wish you a great rest of the day. Keep yourself and your family safe. And um, anything else uh, you want to end off with? Uh, first of all, thank you, Brent. I greatly appreciate this opportunity and greatly appreciate that you guys actually reached uh, to me and the fact that you're actually trying to get a feedback from other airports in terms of how you can actually help us improve our business. And definitely it's a two-way relationship and kudos for this attempt. In the future, I would definitely appreciate if you can actually foster some kind of a collaborative uh, set of sessions between multiple different airports, at least Canadian, but I would be very open to actually see other airports actually coming to these forums because yeah. at this, at the end, like we're all in all this thing together and for us to grow and uh, for us actually to make the world better for, the, um, for our passengers, we need to cooperate all together. Yeah. As simple as that. Couldn't Thank you again. It any better than that. Thank you for your help, Jocko. We really appreciate it and uh, all the best. Thank you. Have a good day. Thank you.